Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Rider podcast. I do love the eclectic mix of guests that we have on this show from the world of technology, startups, and even live events. But today, it's time for me to go a little bit techy with you all again. Now, as you're all probably aware, companies of all sizes across various industries all shared how they were going through the digital transformation and adopting a DevOps culture as a result. And I think that started around the beginning of 2017. Now, many leaders felt pressurised to say this because of the hype at the time. And many top executives at these companies, if we're honest with each other, never really bought into that idea until recently. Now, they're turning to experts such as New Relic, and they're at the heart of DevOps and the digital transformation because they have the expertise and are fully committed to that idea. Now, this is an area I wanted to explore and go beyond the buzzword. So I invited New Relic's Chief Product Officer, Jim Goshi, on the show to learn why CEOs are now fully committed to DevOps and digital transformation, and also how New Relic is helping customers such as Scripps, DraftKings, and Braze, who've approached them for tips and help, and also discuss some of those top questions and challenges that CEOs and companies are facing right now. So buckle up and hold on tight as I beam your ears all the way to Portland in Oregon so we can speak with Jim Goshi from New Relic. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Jim. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yeah, hi. Uh, It's great to be on the show. So uh, I'm the Chief Product Officer of New Relic. And, uh, and I oversee um, product development here, and that includes the developers, engineering, as well as product managers, the user experience team, uh, and corporate development. And, uh, and so New Relic is, uh, is a web performance company. Our tool is used by over uh, 17,000 uh, customers uh, who use us really to make sure that they're providing a great digital experience, whether it's a mobile app, um, you know, a website or a web services based uh, solution, our, our monitoring tool helps make sure that everything is operating correctly. So just to set the scene, can you help listeners visualize what problems New Relic solves and how you're helping customers who are approaching you for tips? Because I, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people hearing about you for the first time. So I just want to get them up to speed. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so you're probably familiar with uh, Trainline in the, in the UK, right? So yeah. if, you want to, if you want to get a ticket on your mobile device, um, you want to travel somewhere, uh, you want to you want to make sure when you need to go uh, purchase that ticket, you want to make sure that it's that's working correctly, right? You you want to make sure that the the site is up, the app is responsive, and you can get your your ticket very quickly. So, um, Trainline is one of our customers, and so they use New Relic on uh, on their software systems that kind of power the mobile experience, and uh, and they use New Relic to make sure that the, all of the, all the different services, all the software behind the scenes is working correctly, and if it's not, which sometimes happens for one reason or another. If it's not working, quickly troubleshoot and dive deep into that part of the system to figure out why it's not working so that the tech team uh, can roll out uh, a fix very, very quickly, right? So we're kind of this I like to I like to think of us as an EKG machine, you know, uh, but instead of being an e, but instead of being a monitoring solution for your heart, you know, as an EKG is, um, it's for all of the software that powers a digital business. Wow, that's incredibly cool. So I've got to ask then, what are the top questions and top challenges that companies are facing right now and typically come to you for help with? We've been around for 10 years and this, the, this category of tooling that we offer has been around for probably 25 years. You know, the main, the main question is, is my site running? What's the response time? What are the errors going on? Uh, how do all the different pieces of my service interconnect, and and is that is that functioning? So that's really um, that's really the main question. Now there's been and there's sort of um, more recent use cases, uh, more recent reasons why someone would look at us that involve cloud, cloud migration, cloud adoption. You know, new kinds of software architectures um, using like serverless technologies. Uh, as an example, um, AWS Lambda. Uh, and so I think the cloud is, is kind of driving a whole uh, different way that software is being built and run. Um, and so that's a, that, those are sort of newer use cases that are bringing people into a tool like New Relic so they can help make sure that when they're running on the cloud or migrating to the cloud, 
that that's all working correctly and smoothly. So in your opinion, are enterprises now fully committed to DevOps culture and the digital transformation? Are they still playing catch up? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. So again, New Relic's been around for 10 years. And so I've seen the, I've seen the, um, the progression happen. And you know, a couple years ago, maybe three, three, four years ago, this was at the very beginning of the cycle. Companies were sort of exploring it. They were talking about their intent to move to the cloud and their intent to be more agile, you know, their intent to embrace DevOps. But I didn't see a whole lot of it. Uh, I would say starting about a year ago, it seemed like companies really, ju- like really were, were investing heavily and getting on board. Um, typically, what I would see is, uh, is a new leader brought in to sort of change the culture, right? To sort of drive a different kind of behavior. And now at this point, it is, uh, it's gone mainstream and and enterprises have absolutely committed to it because they they know um, the benefits of being in the cloud, the benefits of being agile, the benefits of having a DevOps culture. They just have so, it's overwhelming. Uh, now evidence that this is the right uh, approach to take. This is the mo- this is the modern uh, modern IT, modern you know development techniques and development tools, absolutely uh, pay off and are the are the right right solution. Now I recently read that New Relic has partnered with IBM Cloud to expand in Europe and also accelerate enterprise cloud adoption. So can you expand on that? It's an incredibly exciting announcement. Yeah, it is. So we're, um, I mean, we're really pleased to open up our first data center outside of the United States. And uh, the data center is going to be based in in Frankfurt. We've had a long history with IBM um, as a customer of New Relic. So IBM, believe it or not, um, has been using New Relic for about six years uh, on their own internal software projects. You know, they, uh, you know, they've sort of embraced, you know, the DevOps culture and they've embraced moving to, to SaaS software. And, uh, and so they've used New Relic as a strategic partner along the way. Um, that relationship has really grown and, uh, and, and they approached us a couple of years ago and they said, you know, we'd love, we'd love to have, you know, New Relic take a look at partnering with us in Europe. They have a very strong brand in Europe. Um, they, you know, they're also really, really pushing hard and investing in their own cloud offering, the IBM cloud. And, uh, and so just based on the strength of this, of this partnership, you know, we, we, we agreed, uh, we agreed to go into Europe with them and we couldn't be more excited about this. And, uh, and again, because we think IBM really does have a special brand, uh, in Europe, especially when it comes to data privacy and, and things like that, IBM is very, very skilled in that. Uh, and of course, with GDPR, you know, that data privacy is a, is a big topic right now. Absolutely. And also, I believe, I mean, I think you've got a combination of New Relic and AWS that enables your customers to adopt a performance culture and take ownership of their code right through through the build to deployment of a product. I mean, can you tell me more about that combination? Yeah, well, you know, I have a lot of respect for AWS. They've yeah. um, they've just done they've done amazing things. Really, I think they're probably just a little bit uh, a little bit older than us. They've been going for just about ten years as well. And uh, you know, they're they're sort of they're leading they're leading uh, you know they're leading this um, this whole push to the cloud. They they have the most uh, full featured cloud on the market. And, uh, and a lot of our customers are running in AWS. So we've, we have a long history and relationship with AWS. And, you know, the big thing that they're pushing on right now is cloud migration and cloud adoption, and especially within the enterprise, right? So they've always done pretty well with, with smaller startups and entrepreneurs. Um, you know, they started a couple years ago to push, push into the enterprise, and, and now we're seeing a lot of enterprises uh, want to move to AWS. Now, migration is tricky, though. Migration is hard, and, uh, you know, you need to have a complete inventory of all of your systems that you're going to move. Uh, and, you know, as you move them, the characteristics of how that software operates will change. Sometimes software gets faster. Sometimes it, um, it gets slower when it moves to the cloud, just because the characteristics are different. And so what we've done in conjunction with with AWS, uh, they have a program for cloud migration, a multi-step program. And we have come in and we've said, look, if you use New Relic at at these different stages of migration, right from the beginning on through, you know, sort of getting an inventory, 
starting to migrate services, when services do migrate, validating that they're working correctly, and then you know managing them from managing those services ongoing. If you use Neuralic at each stage, we will help ensure that the cloud migration succeeds. It will help it go faster. Um, and so as it goes faster, you know, you get a better outcome. Uh, you can decommission, you know, data center servers more quickly. Uh, and basically teams can start can start on the, the real work of, of improving and expanding services as opposed to just simply migrating them, you know, from an on-premise data center in, into the cloud. You guys really do seem to spin so many different plates there. But what is it that you think that makes New Relic stand out <laughs> from other solutions out there? You know, I mean, the main difference between us and the other vendors in the market is we've been uh, we've been multi-tenant SaaS. We've been kind of all in on sort of this modern software approach and architecture from day one. So we've been doing this for ten years, uh, wh whereas the other competitors in the market you know, had a more traditional on-prem offering. Uh, maybe they would then host that in the cloud for you. But really, you know, we're, we're very aligned to the cloud. We're the most cloud aligned of the vendors. We have the most support for modern environments. We also actually um, differentiate too because we focused on making our solution easy to use. And we have by far and away the most users in the industry using New Relic. Uh, versus the other products in the market. We really focused on ease of use, uh, quick time to value, you know, just like a, a delightful user experience. Um, and that's because the, the company CEO and I worked together at Apple uh, many years ago, but we really appreciate sort of that user-centric design and making sure, you know, you, could, you can build great, you can build a great offering, but if no one can figure out how to use it, then what do you have? You don't have anything, right? So you get whatever you do has to be usable, and we stand out in the pack um, on that as well. So, what would you say your biggest challenges and equally biggest opportunities in your role are at the moment? Well, the biggest challenge is scale. <laughs> so <laughs> it um, it's I mean we're an incredible we're in an incredible time right now with digital transformation, which you you know you asked about earlier. It is happening everywhere. And so we have, we have so much demand for our service, um, you know, so much demand on, uh, you, know, you know, sort of my time and my team's time. Uh, customers want to fly in. We fly them into Portland, Oregon, uh, because they want to learn more about how, how we build software, how we organize our development and operations teams, how we use New Relic ourselves. Um, and so it's just an incredible, it's an incredible time, but it puts a lot of demand and pressure uh, you know, to scale us as, as, as people, you know, uh, in teams and also to scale our solution, um, you know, because, uh, you know, we do, we do have a lot of data flowing in. Uh, in fact, when we, when we look at it, we're one of the top 10 websites in the world for data flowing into us. Um, and that's all the monitoring data that we collect, right? So when we're monitoring someone's uh, website, or mobile app experience, all that data flows into New Relic. And so it's been a challenge over the years, you know, keeping up with uh, the with scale of that. Certainly sounds like you've got a set of good problems there, right? Those are the right problems yeah. to have, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next for New Relic? Is there anything else that you can share with us today about your future plans? So, you know, when we, when we, look, at, when we look at like markets and like future growth opportunities, uh, you know, we couldn't be happier with, with where we are today. Um, you know, we're, we're one of the top uh, APM vendors in the monitoring category, application monitoring. Um, and, you know, but we, we think we can do more and we, and we want to do more. And, uh, and when we look at, um, you know, we look at companies in the market, one of the companies we really respect is ServiceNow. And, they, and they've, they've kind of created this platform, you know, for internal facing IT. Uh, and they've done an amazing job with it, and a lot of companies have standardized on ServiceNow. And, and there's really not an equivalent full platform for that external-facing IT or that customer-facing you know, digital experience. Um, there's not like a platform in that sense uh, yet, and we think we can be that platform. We think we can be that, that tool that's very comprehensive, that operations and development teams rely on exclusively for everything that they do that, that touches the digital experience and touches the customer. And so, um, so basically that means like, you know, even more use cases than we service today, an even broader footprint of the kinds of things that we can, 
monitor and um, so really having that vision uh, of having the best platform the only platform that you would need to, to uh, as an operations uh, group that's really our, our vision and we're pretty excited about that excellent well a huge thank you for taking the time to come and speak with me today but can i also just ask that you remind the listeners of where they can find you guys online and also contact a member of your team if they have any questions or just want to continue the conversation we started today yeah, absolutely. We're real easy to find, www.newrelic.com. And you can go there and you can read more about our offering. And we have a, um, a contact us page where you can plug your info in and submit a form and someone will uh, someone will get back to you. One of the things I love about what you do there, not only are you allowing businesses to get real-time performance insights into software, infrastructure, and indeed customer experience, and get to know that right now, to me, you guys, especially after your train line comparison there, you're like the unsung heroes of business and the entire web. So a big <laughs> thank you for coming on and sharing your story today. Thank you. Well, thank you, Neil. I appreciate it. You just made my day by saying <laughs> that. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. I genuinely meant what I said there about companies such as New Relic are the unsung heroes of business and web. Because as customers, our expectation level is now sky high. And Jim's train line example really resonated with me because I use that site all the time. And you know what? I just expect it to work. And as a customer, I have no idea how a business gets real-time performance insights from its software infrastructure, from the website, and also the customer experience levels. Now, from my IT background, I know the importance of monitoring key services. And I know my old friend James Hill is probably nodding in agreement somewhere right now. But we all take that ability to know right now what is wrong, how to fix it, if any problem arises, for granted. So I hope you found today's episode as useful as I did. But you are a member of this conversation too. So even if you're a lurker or a long-time listener and first-time caller, I'm one of the most approachable and easiest people to reach online, or at least I try to be. So as long as it's not a sales pitch and you just want to share your thoughts, ask me a question that's been bugging you or you've always wanted to ask me but we're a little bit too wary of doing so, or even just send me a photo of where you listen to this show and what you see each morning while my voice is deep in your earballs. And you can do that by emailing me at techblogwriter at outlook.com or tweeting me at Neil C. Hughes. But it's time for me to go now, so I'll see you all tomorrow, and I'll say those words until next time, my friends. Don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.